work it. Hi, hi, good morning and welcome to the Coffee Run Live today on what is a very glorious, glorious Wednesday. I hope you are all doing really, really well. I am I'm doing all right today. It's been a it's been a bit of a morning, I've got to tell you. I a couple of things that I want to talk to you about is the hot seat that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And there is a link in here. You can see that in there. Actually, let me put that in there now so that you have got it. I feel like I've been battling um, a little bit of almost like conjunctivitis or something coming up in my right eye. Like this eye here, it's really awful. I'm not very happy about it. Um, I think it's coming from being maybe feeling like a little bit run down, but also feeling a little bit uh, almost, I guess, kind of like a little bit anxious actually um, this morning, which hasn't been amazing. I've written a blog about it. Uh, so that'll, um, that'll come through a little later on for you today. As you're coming in, let me know you can hear me. There was something very strange just going on um, with the live, I think. But what I've got coming up is I have got some new branding photos that I am supposed to be having taken in the next couple of weeks, and I am incredibly excited about it. And so what I thought I would talk to you about is why they are really important. Do you really need them? Are they actually really important? So the list of things that I was thinking, and if you've got questions about the branding photos, please put them in because I would really love to answer them for you. But I thought, do you need them? Do you want them? Should you have them? When should you get them? Do they actually work? How often should you do them? And you know anything else that you have that you have that you want to throw at me? Let me know. I actually have got together. It's really fun. I've got a branding photos checklist. I'm not sure. I might actually double check. I'm not sure if that's on the website. Uh, excuse me. Let's see if I can um, see that actually. Uh, because maybe that might be something that's a little bit of help for you as well. So as you know, we've got some crazy, crazy things happening. Um, oh, look at that. They are not, it is not there. There is not many things there. All right, I'll make sure that this gets up onto the website um, so that you guys can download that for free, which will be fun. But what I thought I would talk to you about today is like number one, I guess, like why you would want them. Are they really important and things like that. Now, I know that for me, I like, I personally like being able to write a blog. I like being able to talk about stuff and then attach a photo or a um, like an image that represents me, that really represents I guess like, you know, the, the blog that I'm writing about and things like that. The, the big thing that I really, really want, I guess, to make sure that I'm always doing is I want people to go, oh, look, there's Nicola again. Oh, look, there's Nicola again. Oh, look, she's changed her hair again. <laughs> um, I want you guys to have my face, my name popping up in your newsfeed all the time. I want my face and I've always wanted my face to be my brand. Now, you can think about having a logo, you can think about all of that kind of stuff, and you know, I, I have only had a logo, like a logo, which was developed, the first one was developed, I think in 2016, maybe 2017, and some of you will remember it, it was the fluoro yellow chakra symbol, it was uh, really beautiful, it had the triangle in the middle and... and um, things like that. It was really, really lovely. And just with this latest rebrand that we did, like new website, new photos, like new whole of everything was only just happened towards the end of last year. And we had a brand new logo developed, or not we, I had a brand new logo developed and it was fantastic. So the logo is great, but the logo isn't going to make my name synonymous with being visible, for example, or synonymous with helping you step into the spotlight. What I know is that if you see my face pop up, you're going to very easily, continuously, you're going to very easily be able to identify my face, my voice, how I am and how I write. A logo can't speak. 
Okay, a logo can't, it, it can invoke a feeling, but it doesn't create that recognizability when you're walking down the street. So the first rule of any kind of branding that you want to do, and this doesn't matter whether you are brand new to business or you've been in it for a while, I would like, please, your face, your very gorgeous face, please make that your logo. Make that the thing that is front and center all the time in your profile photos on Facebook. When people land on your website, they don't give a flying shit about your logo. They want to see your face, right? What it does for them is it helps them to create a really awesome first impression of you, right? Because they'll go, oh, this person seems nice. Oh, this person seems edgy. Oh, this person seems trustworthy. Oh, this person, you know, feels like they're knowledgeable. This, this person feels like a total badass. Like this person feels like a rock star. This person feels like they'd be fun to work with. This person feels like they know what they're talking about, right? So that all comes from the imagery that you present. Now, right back in 2010, when I started this business, what I was talking about and what I was teaching was how to create a powerful personal brand that that basically uh, that entrepreneurs or particularly women could use to have themselves looking great and feeling really great in their skin, right? So what we did, or what I did, was I would make sure that from a personal branding with what you're wearing perspective, you could look and feel amazing from the inside out. My business name back then, because I was too scared to brand it as me, was Stylish Silhouettes. Now, I, I challenge you to say that 10 times really fast without drawing breath. Stylish Silhouettes, Stylish Silhouettes, Stylish Silhouettes. Really, really hard to say. So I, I decided in 2000 and like right, like partway through 2012, I was Nicola Morass Stylish Silhouettes on Facebook. And then 2013, I got really brave and I ditched that, uh, that, that business name type thing. And it was just, it was all about my name and me building a personal brand around my name. And the reason that I did that and the reason I encourage you guys to think about this is that unless you're planning on selling the business, right? If you're planning on selling the business at some point in time, then, then that's maybe a bit of a different ball game. But if we look at all of the people who um, who was going, all right, well, who have, who have really made it? Who are really well known? Who are... Um, who are the people that we can easily identify with? Like Oprah, Tony Robbins, Richard Branson, Grant Cardone, um, Brendan Rashad. You know, all of the people, all of the big names in the, in, in the industry are their names. They're not, they're, they're, they're not well known, not easily identifiable, as easily identifiable by their product right? So that's the, that's the differentiation that I want to make there. You know, you're not Coca-Cola. You are not Apple, right? We want your name to become synonymous and your face to become synonymous with your message, all right? That's first and foremost. Now, when we think about the uh, your branding photos and, and things like that, I, I had in 2010, I had some photos taken towards the end of that year by a photographer who's typically a family photographer, not a branding photographer. And it's like little old me. I was all like little young me. It was like all little and cute and, you know, but hair very probably similar actually to how it is now because it was quite short at the time. And um, I, I remember feeling really awkward. I didn't really know what I wanted, but I thought, right, well, I'm happy to spend a couple of hundred dollars getting a couple of professional photos taken, uh, not by a branding photographer, but just by a normal photographer. And I thought I would use those on, on social media for my profile photos and things like that on social media. So you can do that. Like it was literally a couple hundred dollars. It was not much money at all. Then I had a, a girlfriend of mine, her husband wanted to get into branding photography. This is uh, Carmen, you know her. Um, so her her husband and her and her children were coming up to Mildura and I would put, put out a post asking about um, branding photographers and they suggested that maybe they could do it and I've gone, okay, cool, because he was learning. So I didn't pay for the session and he gave me all the images. So some of you will have seen my spy school photos, like the shh 
photos like that with the sunglasses on and like I'm all hiding, you know, being all sneaky spy person. Uh, he took those photos. Now, again, it wasn't really, it wasn't in a studio. It wasn't a, like we were both learning. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. He didn't really know what I was doing and, and all of that kind of thing. So, and he didn't really, I don't know that he really knew what he was doing. So we just tried some different things and we had some really awesome shots come up and out of it. So that was really awesome. But I guess like that took me through to 2013 and from then, I didn't have a proper studio photo shoot with a proper brand photographer until uh, 2015. Now, what I learned through that process was that I made millions of dollars without any real proper professional photographs. I hadn't had any branding done. I hadn't had any strategy done. It was just like, all right, I need some photos to be able to use for headshots and things like that. So I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. So we tried some stuff. I didn't really have any strategy and and I didn't really know what I wanted. So these days the things that I guess like we've we've really got that I, I really want you to consider is like the question of do you really need professional branding photos? No, you don't. You can take your phone, you can go and take some selfies, you can go and get yourself dressed up, you can go and do a whole bunch of things. If you've got a digital SLR camera, then, you know, boning is for you, that's awesome. Um, if you know someone who can take some photos of you, that is awesome. You don't have to, particularly at the start, you don't have to go and do it. And a lot of people, what pisses me off is that a lot of people will say, well, like your, your photos don't, um, you know, match who you are, or you, you've got to go and spend money on a branding shoot, which could cost you anywhere from, I don't know, like $1,500 to $2,500. And they don't, the photographers are awesome at photography, but typically they're not marketing strategists they are excellent at what it is that they do, right? It's rare to find a branding photographer who is also very strategically minded. Now, they, they are out there and some of them do exist, but you know, you want to think about, well, like, do I, am I getting these done because I feel like I have to? Am I getting these done because you want to be perceived in a certain way? Or are you getting them done because you feel like you should? So you you shouldn't be doing them because you feel like you should. You can make tens of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars without having professional photos taken. You can actually make tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars without your website even being beautiful and professionally done. Like the, the one that I had done a few years ago was awesome in 2016. It was really great. And that lasted me, like that design lasted me a number of years. And then I had the one that I really, really wanted that I was kind of too scared to even dream for. Uh, a few years ago, I had it done last year. And I now, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it's fantastic. But you don't need these things in order to be successful, right? You don't need to have branding photos in order to market yourself. You don't need to have a fancy ass website to market yourself and put yourself out there. So there's some big misnomers around there. So what you want to think about is if you have got a, a budget, right? Set yourself a budget with what you might be looking at in terms of your marketing dollar spend and the split across the board over a year, let's say. Uh, your website, maybe like not even a year, but but you might if you've got ten thousand dollars to spend, you you want to spend the lion's share of that on lead generation, and on advertising, and on making sure that you're launching in an appropriate way. You know, for you, you might decide to spend five hundred dollars on photography. You might decide to spend, you know, maybe five hundred to a thousand dollars on your website, but you don't want to spend any more than a couple of grand on the visual. Uh, let's say that the visual merchandising of what it is that you're doing. The majority of everything can be done without having those things there. So if you don't have a huge budget, if you haven't got a huge ad spend, if you haven't got a huge marketing budget, then don't worry about the branding photos. You can deal with. Uh, what you've got right now, use what you've got right now, or hire someone like your friend uh, to like shout them a bottle of champagne or like a dinner out or something like that and get them to take some photos of you. So that that's a big thing. In terms of when should you get them, 
Uh, you know, the, the thing around this is that when you feel like for me, my rule of thumb is, you know, and I use all of the images that I have, I use them a lot. My, or when should I get my next ones done? And it's usually when I feel really bored <laughs> or like the variety that I've got, are uh, like kind of tapped out. So one of the things that I did last year, I, I was supposed to go and have a shoot done in oh, early last year up on the Gold Coast and I couldn't go because lockdowns. And so what I did is like I, I went and hired a, a local accommodation up here in, so I'm in Mildura. I hired a hotel Actually, it's not a hotel. It's like a self-contained apartment. I went and hired this self-contained apartment. I had my camera. I knew I had the wall. You'll actually see some photos from this go up. And literally what I did is I, I, I videoed myself in different poses, in different outfits, took screenshots out of them, and I used those for a fair chunk of last year uh, for my the, the photos that I used. I did it the, towards the end of last year. You, you guys will know I shaved my head. In uh, July last year, my best friend had breast cancer and we both shaved our heads on the same day because uh, we both love our hair and we're very passionate about our hair. And I'm like, well, if you have to lose your hair, I'll, I'll shave my head with you and, and hopefully, you know, be there to, to support you uh, like from here because I couldn't do it out there. She was in Sydney. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I'm, I've got some people who'll be rolling up on my Facebook lives and I have no hair like, and it's dark. So I thought, right, well, I've got, and I don't know how long it, that's going to last for. So I had some new professional photos taken in August last year as well, actually. So I guess the thing that I really want to hammer home is this, like you don't need them, but if you are going to get them, they are the types of things that you want to use over and over again. So here are my top tips. You want to have a range of photos that are horizontal, right? Now, the majority of images that I use these days and that will repurpose tend to be horizontal. And the reason for that is that you can kind of crop in nice and close. And also if you use the whole image, you can put text over here or you can put text over there. So you want some photos of you offset to the, you know, off to the side and off to the side this way and then one in the middle. You want to have some vertical shots as well because you will find that some of the photos that you'll use, you need a full length photos of you. And then you can always come in and crop them in have some plain backgrounds, have some nice backgrounds. Um, if you're thinking about your facial expressions and you think about what you're going through. So the blog that I wrote this morning that will go up a bit later on for you today is all around how ridiculously overwhelmed and anxious I've been feeling this morning. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. I was writing, 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 writing. And I, I, talk, I talked through basically what I do and when this happens and, and how I feel and et cetera, et cetera. And so after I'd written the blog, I'm like, okay, well, I need some photos to go with that for sharing on social media and for putting up on the website. So the photos that I looked for were reflective of that kind of state of mind. So some of them are like me sort of like looking down. I'm not crying in the, in the imagery and things like that. But I'm like, right, well, we all have a host of emotions. So we've got excitement. So you want some photos that are of you excited. We've got uh, happy. We want some happy photos of you. We want some photos where, you know, you're a deep thinker, right? I know that there are times where you might be contemplating things. And so sometimes, and, and if you've got a good photographer, they can kind of capture expressions in motion. So if you're kind of going like, this is me, and then you're like, you know, you're, you're kind of thinking and your stature's a bit different, they should be able to capture some of those images while you're kind of like, you know, in, in that bit, and then you can use those, even if they're not your favorite, and even if you're not looking down the barrel of the camera, you can use those photos for different pieces of marketing that might be a little bit more introspective or a little bit more, um, oh, what's the word? Um, contem con where you're contemplating. I was gonna say contemplational, and I don't I think I just made up a word. Um, where you're contemplating something, like you're thinking about something. There are some photos that you want to be 
that you're where you're kind of like maybe three quarters on and you're kind of going like, oh, hi, you know, so like over your right shoulder. And then you want to make sure that you've got some going over your left shoulder. You want to probably like look to the back and then look forward. So when you are organizing your photographer, right, and you and you've booked in and it's all happening, make sure you're having a conversation with them where you say, look, I want to be using these for blogs, for social media, right? Or whatever else it is that you're, you're using them for. This is, these are the things that I need and this is how they're going to be applied, okay? So that, that's what I, this is how I brief my photographer. I also come up with maybe four, probably four key, almost like themes or words that I want them to try and pull out of me in the shoot, right? So for example, with this, this upcoming one, I want some photos that are kind of like a little bit more edgy. I want some photos that are of me, like I've, I realized like I haven't got many photos of me like journaling and I journal all the time. Uh, of me perhaps like working on my computer or of me more lifestyle kind of photos and, and things like that. So you want to think about, all right, well, what are maybe four key words? So like badass, um, fun, uh, edgy, cool, calm and collected, sophisticated, knowledgeable. You know, think about those key words that you want them to elicit out of you. Because while they are, um, you know, while photographers are awesome and amazing, we all still need direction. Right. So, and they don't know what you're thinking in your head. They don't know what, what ideas you've got. And I find it really hard to go and create like a, a dream board. I'm like, I don't want photos like everybody else. I want photos of me that are different and, and a kind of like they, I want them to pull me out of this kind of thing. So for edgy, I go, look, this is what edgy means to me. Right. And this is how I feel when I feel edgy. And this is kind of, this is the outfit that I think I'll wear you know, and then I'm going to let you do your thing, right? So outfits, four outfits, four words, and just be really clear on <clears throat> how you're going to use these photos and how you're going to use the imagery. Because if you're going to invest in them, they are probably going to last you for a year, right? One year. So you want to use the shit out of them. So if you think about it, if you've got a year's worth of photos and let's say it costs you $1,500. It depends on, on who the photographer that you use and, and how they do it and what they provide you with. I make sure that no matter what photographer I choose, I get all of the images, all of them. I don't want them to pick and choose maybe just four and I don't want a short list. I am very clear I want all of the images because there are some images that they might go, yeah, I'm going to delete that. And I'm like, just give me them all. I want them all because it might be like a, a difference between a this and then a this and then a this and then a this. And, you know, I can use those different images in different ways. Now, obviously, if they're going to be giving you all of the images, you might pay a little bit more. So just bear that in mind. So I want all of the images. I want them all digitally. I don't want any prints. I'm probably never going to print any of the photos ever, so I don't need that. But I will be using it. I need a high-res version of the photos because I might use them on my websites. I might use them. I might use them to print, you know, on the front of a folder if I'm putting on an event or a workshop or make, making a banner or something like that, um, and things like that. So. I hope that helps you. I, I know that some people are like, oh, I've got to go get my brand photos done when you first start up in business. And honestly, you don't. It's not going to make a scrap of difference to whether people will buy from you or not. It Honestly, it won't. It might help create a, a great first impression, but you've got other ways and other resources and you already are amazing. And I'm sure you've already got photos that you can use that will do that. Or you can you know, wrangle one of your friends in for a weekend away and, and use it as a photo shoot weekend. And, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of fun things that you could do around that. So I hope that's helpful for you. If you've got any questions on that, please make sure you let me know. Thanks, Carmen. I'm glad that that has been helpful for you. All right. 
I am going to love you and leave you and set you free about your day. We've got the Gold Coast Gold Coast Hot Seat coming up in a couple of weeks. Come hell or high water, I will be there. Uh, so you can see the link in the comments. If you have any questions about that, make sure you let me know. Otherwise, you know what you need to do. You need to get yourself out there, go help some people, have a whole ton of fun doing it, and remember that the world is ready for your brand of awesome. You rock. Mwah. I will see you very soon.